Um, you know, um, th those of the youth who were baptized um, during the youth camp, could you please stand up? We'd like to recognize you. You know, if you, um, if you were baptized um, that day, congregate. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Hallelujah. Um, congratulations. You will be receiving a certificate um, of, um, um, you know, a certificate of baptism. We're just going to be getting them, um, we're going to be getting them ready. Um, hallelujah. Brother Joe, it's good to see you. Welcome back. Um, it's here, you know, what a surprise, what an entrance. Um, Sister Rose is still floating right now. Amen, but good job. Praise the Lord for that. Really, it's good to see you, Joe. Um, hallelujah. Um, for the men's, just to clarify, no, um, we're going to be providing coffee. It, um, it's 8.30 in the morning. There's going to be a Bible study um, um, for the men, but um, we'd, like to in, we'd like to invite you. But this is going to be, this is going to be something like a, potluck, um, like a potluck breakfast. Just bring, you know, um, you bring a donut each. You're good already. We provide the coffee. Okay, but um, so um, it's going to be, we're, we're going to be giving you more information. It's Saturday, um, June 3 um, at 8.30 um, at 8.30 a.m., okay? So, um, anyway, turn your Bibles with me, please, to Jeremiah chapter 29. It's a familiar passage of Scripture for us, um, and, um, you know, let me ask you a question. How many of you are believing God and waiting for a breakthrough in your life? Yeah, come on. You're praying for somebody. You're waiting, you're, you're waiting for God to provide something. You know, you're, um, you're anticipating something. You're hoping that God will move. Um, you're looking for a breakthrough in your life. Um, you know, there's a situation that you're asking God to, um, to do, asking God to move. And, um, you know, at this point in time, you're still, you know, you're still, um, you're still waiting. And you see, the reality is this. Many times, you know, many times we have to wait, okay? Many times things don't happen overnight, okay? And many times there is really, there, there seems to be a waiting period. There seems to be an in-between period between what we are expecting and the arrival, what we are praying for and the actual answer, what we are hoping for, and the reality of what, you know, of, um, of, of, of it happening. And I'd like to talk to you today about, about what you can do, okay, what we can do, how we can respond, okay, um, in a way, you know, while we are waiting, how, in a sense, how to keep our spirituality in track, okay, how to keep our spirituality healthy, while waiting for God to answer that prayer, okay, to provide that breakthrough or to move upon that, you know, upon that situation. Because the truth is this, okay, the truth is this, God is good, amen? The Bible speaks about that from beginning to end. God is good, and He wants to, and He will manifest His goodness in our lives as we seek to follow him, okay? I remember an old preacher say this, one of God's greatest joys is to bless his children. But the reality is this, the Bible also says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His timetable is not our timetable. And his timetable can be very, very different from ours and oftentimes, we have to wait, okay, or we are encouraged to wait before we see His goodness manifest in our lives. And it is the waiting period that can be difficult, yes? Huh? It is the waiting period because we are not a naturally patient people. We don't like to wait especially in today's age where everything is microwavable, <laughs> right? Okay, everything is instant, everything is microwavable, okay? We have not been trained to wait anymore, okay? Where everything is made 
accessible to us and everything is convenient. To top it off, we have an enemy whose name is Satan, okay, who many times will use this waiting period to play games with us, to play games in our minds, to try to weaken our spirituality, you know, to bring discouragement, to bring doubt, to bring defiance, and to bring self-pity. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Probably all because we've all experienced it at one point in time. But I have something to say to you today. Your present situation is not your final destination. Turn to one another and say this. Your present situation is not your final destination. And I'd like us to read, please, Jeremiah chapter 29. It's a familiar passage to all of us. You know, I've preached from this before. I probably will preach from it again, you know, um, in the future. But I just felt that um, this was something that the Lord wanted to remind us of. I'll start from verse 4. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Do not dwindle away and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare, and for its welfare will determine your welfare. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says okay, in verse 10. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things. Everybody say good things. I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. Everybody say plans for good. And not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Everybody say future and hope. Okay. In those days, God says, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. What's God telling his people here? They were in exile because of their disobedience to the Lord, okay? because of their um, overt idolatry and their constant disobedience. God finally puts the hammer down on them in order to teach them a lesson, okay? allows Nebuchadnezzar, the emperor of Babylon, to conquer them, okay? And they are brought into exile, okay? They are scattered all throughout the Babylonian empire. You know, many of them are settled, you know, are settled in, you know, are settled in Babylon, okay? And they're feeling sorry for themselves. They're feeling really, really bad. God, through prophets of old, tells them that you're going to be there for 70 years. You are going to be in exile for 70 years, Okay? And after 70 years, I am going to send you back. The problem was this. Many of them resisted it. Many of them rejected it. Many of them did not want to be in exile. And like one scholar says, actually, when they got to where they were brought to in the empire of Babylon, many of them did not even bother to unpack because they wanted to go back home. Because they were not happy with their situation. Okay? They had been, you know, they had been uprooted. God is telling his people here, your present situation is not your final destination. 
I have a plan for you. I have a good plan for you. I have a blessed future on, um, um, in store for you. Wait on me to move. Okay? But I must be the one to move. I will be the one to bring you back. I brought you here. I will bring you back. But the, the reassurance here in this particular passage, verses 10 to 14, is this. Your present situation is not your final destination. And let me talk to you today. Whatever it is that you are going through right now, whatever struggle you're experiencing right now, okay, whatever, whatever difficulty, whatever trial you are experiencing right now, um, I hope that this is embedded in your hearts, embedded in your spirits. No matter how bad it may be for you right now, because God is God, because God is good, because God is on your side, your present situation is not your final destination. If you're praying for something and it's not yet there, your present situation is not your final destination destination if you're asking God to move if you're expecting God to move and it's not yet there your present situation is not your final destination and we wait we wait in faith we wait in hope why because we believe that God is good we look at life we look at what we are going through through the filter of God's goodness, and we never lose sight of that. No matter how hard the devil will try, and we continue to wait, we continue to believe, we continue to hope, because we know that one day God will come through for us. God will bring us to the final destination. We know that one day Jesus will come back, yes? That is promised in Scripture. Okay. But between now and then, that's our final destination as God's people. You know, eternity in the presence of God. But we're on a journey. But our present situation is not yet our final destination. You know, I look at it also from, from what we're going through here in the church. Last year, we launched Project Haggai, our building program. By the way, we're still looking for buildings. Okay, we are still looking for buildings. We, you know, we will be, we will, we, we will continue to, you know, we will continue to raise funds, you know, to be able to build up our reserves for a down payment. We continue to work with realtors. Okay, you know, we launched this last year because we believed that was the destiny God has in store for us, and we continue to believe that that is the destiny God has in store for us for as a congregation here. We are believing God for a bigger place. Okay, we are believing God, you know, for a for 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 um for a building with a sanctuary that is double this size because this is not everybody yet. Okay, and we believe that there is a building here in this city with our name on it. Okay, that God has prepared a building, okay, for us in this city with our name on it. For the last year and a half, we have looked, we have prayed, we have raised funds. Okay. We're still waiting. We're still believing. We're still praying. We're still hoping. We're still working. Why? Because we believe our present situation right now is not God's final destination for us. That God's got a building out there. That's waiting for us. That's got our name, actually. It's prepared for us. So far, the many buildings we've seen, none of them seem to sing yet in our hearts. But there's one there. And when we get there, it's going to sing because God's prepared a place for us. But whatever situation you're going through right now, be it relational, be it financial, be it health, Whatever challenge you're experiencing right now, understand this. Your present situation is not your final destination. So what do we do? 
How do we respond? How do we as God's people carry ourselves and conduct ourselves as we are going through our present situation? Hoping and looking forward to God's destiny and God's destination for us. I'd like to share with you some thoughts. First is this one, recognize God's hand. In verse 4, he says this. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. The God of Israel says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. I like the way the, if you're, if, um, um, this is from the New Living Translation. I like the way the New International Version puts it. To all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah clearly tells them that the exile was God's doing. Okay? That the Babylonian army was the agent of God in everything that had happened. Because all the force of Babylon could not have done it if God had not allowed it. And that Israel was to submit to the will of God and not resist the work that God was doing. God is never arbitrary. When God allows something to happen in our lives, it is always for a purpose. Okay? It is always for a purpose. It's never wasted. It's always for a purpose. It is our responsibility now to look to God and to say, God, what is it that you are doing? What is it that you are showing me? What is it that you are telling me? Okay. And God caused them to be exiled for a purpose. The main purpose was this, to bring their hearts back to him because they had become very, very hard-hearted. Okay. They had be become very, very callous. And many times, and many times, God allows certain things to happen to us because he's reminding us. He's reminding us. Somebody once said, good times God whispers, in the bad times God screams at us and God shouts at us to remind us. But what's important is this, when we recognize the hand of God in our situation, whatever it is that you are going through right now, understand God's hand is there. Okay? God has not abandoned you. He may allow a test or a trial to come, but he will never, never allow it to destroy you. He will see to it that you will benefit. He may allow tests and trials to come, but he will never abandon you in your test and in your trial. Come to God. Ask him to reveal to you the purpose behind the test or the trial. Lord, what is it that you are doing? What is it that you are telling me? What is it that you are showing me? But it's important. Okay? As you know, we, we journey in this present situation looking forward to the good that God has in store for us. Recognize God's hand. A second is this, continue to function. He says, you know, the Lord speaking to the prophet says, build homes, plan to stay, plant gardens and eat the food, food they produce, marry and have children, then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren, multiply, do not dwindle away. That's Jeremiah, that was the advice of the prophet, settle down and make life as normal as possible. Apparently, when they got to where they were going, they were living in makeshift houses, okay? They, they still thought as refugees they were going to be transferred somewhere else or they were going to go back. Some of them had not even unpacked, okay? Because they were not planning on staying. They were planning on leaving and going back. Jeremiah the prophet tells them, guys, you're here for 70 years, okay? You're not here for seven days, it's not a vacation, it's a relocation. Okay? So basically, he's saying, you know, God's saying, some of you are going to die here. Okay. So settle down for a long wait. Don't wallow in self-pity. Don't wallow in negative emotions. Make the most out of your situation. And use it as an opportunity for growth and blessing. And you know what? The Jews, the Jewish people eventually learned this. Because they were dispersed a second time. 
And history will show that the Jews have followed this principle and pattern. Wherever it is that they were dispersed, they flourished and they prospered while continuing to wait for the restoration of their land. And today in many countries where they are, they are, they are economic powerhouses because they have decided that. Exile for them did not mean that God had forgotten about them or God wanted to destroy them. In the same way, our present situation today, whatever it is that you may be experiencing, does not mean that God has abandoned you or abandoned us. He is still with us. Do not allow your present situation to stop you from believing and pursuing God's blessing for your life. Things may not be going your way right now. But seek to make the most with what you have at the present. You see, it's important for us to recognize that life cannot grind to a halt during trying times. Okay, we cannot give up. I remember, you remember that time we were starting the church in Cebu? And um, the first several years, economically, was just absolutely brutal. It was so hard. It was so hard for us. We had come from a major split. Okay, you're preaching to 700 one day. You're preaching to 70 the next day. Okay, everything just you know everything collapses. And we and we, we and and we have to you know we're we're building the church. We're building the church there. And the money at, at the first several years was not as, not coming in. We find out that Bab Sister Babette is pregnant with Bruno at that point in time. You know the income. We decide to start a small home-based business okay. to make the most, okay, to continue the ministry, not to give up. We decide to make the most out of a home-based, you know, by starting a home-based business, okay. We approach a, um, a, a company there called Pure Foods, okay, and we decide to be a home-based dealer for fresh frozen chicken, okay. So we have, a, they give us a freezer, okay, <laughs> but we need capital we need capital okay and at that point in time we didn't have any savings or whatever um, so we decide you know pray, praying about it we decide to approach somebody um, I think it was in the school of Tono we decide to you know they, they, they were they were you know they would lend money for certain interest okay uh, minimal interest um, so we decide to borrow money from them I, how much did we borrow 20,000 I think it was 20,000, okay? We borrowed 20,000 at the minimal interest, okay? So we used that to start the business, okay? Now, but listen, li li listen to this. Li listen, listen to this, how God is good and how God moves, okay? I think about a week or two weeks later, okay, somebody calls me and says, Andoni, there's a check here for you, okay? And guess from who? I go, who? He goes, Gary V. Gary Valenciano, yeah. Yeah, sends me a check, okay? So I go and pick it up, and I open the check, and it's for 20,000 pesos, which we use right away to pay, and we start that business. You see, yeah, 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 give God praise for that, because yeah, okay? That was, um, that, that was amazing. But you see, you see, your present situation is not your final destination, okay? You recognize that in your present situation, no matter how difficult it is, God's still there with you, okay? And God's hand is in it, okay? And you stop feeling sorry for yourself, okay? You, don't, you, you, you reject wallowing in self-pity, okay? You, 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 you don't allow negative emotions. And you make, you, you know, you make a decision, God... I'm going to make the best with what I have at this point in time while I'm waiting for you to move. I'm, I'm not going to lose sight of the fact that your goodness is waiting for me. I'm not going to lose sight of the fact, okay, that one day I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, okay? That you have a breakthrough waiting for me there, okay? That you have a major blessing waiting for me there, okay? Now I'm believing and I'm waiting. Things may not be ideal right now. Things may not be perfect right now, okay? But I know that my breakthrough, my miracle is on the way. 
So between now and then, I'm not going to lie down and feel sorry for myself. Between now and then, I'm not going to cry. Between now and then, I'm not going to murmur and complain. Between now and then, I'm going to make the best with what I have. And what we had at that point in time was an opportunity to start a business. A small business. Okay. We didn't have the capital, but we believed. Okay. We prayed about it. There was peace about approaching somebody to, you know, to borrow the money. Okay. And you know, when you borrow 20000 like that, automatically they just give you 18000 Because you know, the, the, the interest is taken already, right? Okay. But believing, not feeling sorry for ourselves, continuing to believe that our present situation is not our final destination. But guess what? God honors that. And God honored that. Little did I know that he already had, little did we know that he already had the capital waiting. You continue to function. You continue to function. Life does not grind to a halt during trying times. You make the most with what you have at this point in time. And that's what the Lord was telling the people through the prophet. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're there. You know, God's purpose and God's will is there. You're there for 70 years, okay? Stop waiting to go home. You better start unpacking your stuff. Okay. But you know what God tells them? Seek to prosper. Because even in the midst of the waiting period, prosperity is possible. Even in the, God is good. Even in the midst of the waiting period, it is possible to prosper in God. But your attitude has to be right. Okay. Your focus has to always be, you know, I'm going to function because I believe that God is going to come through for me. Continue to function. The third is this one. Become a blessing. What does the Lord say? What does the Lord tell them? Okay, okay, function. You know, function. Build houses. Marry. Have children. Have grandchildren. Okay? Don't, life does not grind to a halt because of trying times. And then he goes on to say, work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Okay. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. Now, this is strange, okay? This is unique. God's telling them, these people who, cap who made you captives, these people who brought, you know, who I was used to, to exile you, start praying for them. Start praying for the prosperity of the Babylonian people. Rather than resist the empire, God's word to them is seek the prosperity of Babylon because by doing so, you yourselves will prosper. Even in the most difficult of situations, listen, even in the most difficult of situations, you can still become a witness of God's grace in this world you can still become a blessing you know sister lynn is there okay how long were you in the hospital sister lynn two months okay i'll never forget that time okay where you're there you were still waiting for your operation. I think you had been operated. Okay. You, were in, you, were, you were in discomfort or whatever. And you introduced me to that Filipino male nurse. Okay. That even in the midst of all her discomfort and all that, she is ministering to this Filipino male nurse whose wife has a tumor in the base of her brain. Ministering hope. Ministering blessing. Even in the most difficult of situations, you know, we can still, you know, we can still be a blessing. We can still become a witness of God's grace. And there are many things we can do, but the best way we can be a blessing is by 
proclaiming the good news of God's rescue in Jesus Christ. That no matter how difficult it is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how frustrating, no matter how disappointing it is, we never lose sight of the fact that God has called us to be a blessing in this world. And our circumstance and our situation, okay, does not exclude us, okay, or exempt us from seeking to be a blessing. And that's what he's telling them there, you know. He's telling the people, people who had been exiled, okay, okay you guys, you're here now, Make the most out of your situation. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and continue to be a blessing. Pray for the peace and prosperity. Work for the peace and prosperity. See what you can do. See what you can contribute to make things better. And to bring blessing. And the fourth is this, well, even in the most, yeah. The fourth is this one, reject the enemy's lies. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you or deceive you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. When they were exiled, unfortunately, there was a large presence of false prophets among the exiles. And these people were giving, you know, these people were giving them a false hope. These people were saying, oh, God's going to return us back right away. We won't be here 70 years, you know, so get ready to return. It was absolutely contrary to what God wanted for the people. And by the time the Israelites were exiled in Babylon, there was some sort of political unrest as well in Babylon. Okay. In a nation, in, in an empire that big, there is always political unrest. And this led to the false belief that the Babylonian empire was at the point of collapse. Okay. That they were going to impeach Nebuchadnezzar or something like that, overthrow him. And the false prophets were using this to give the exiles a false hope. But God tells them, they don't speak for me. And you see, when conditions in our lives are less than ideal, when we're dealing, when we're encountering trials, troubles, when we're encountering frustrations and disappointments, when we are in the waiting period, okay, how many of you will agree with me to say that's when the enemy is most active? Yeah? Right? That's when he's most active, right? And what, how, how active is he? Okay, He is active through the spreading of misinformation and lies because he is a liar, right? Jesus called him the father of lies. That's who he is, okay? And his greatest attack on us is to our mind. His greatest attack on us is through lying, okay? When you were in the hospital for two months and before that in pain at home, how did he lie to you? He's abandoned you. You're in pain because he no longer loves you, right? Brother Myung, the same? When you were in the hospital for six months, uh, three operations, God has abandoned you. All lies. He will attack you with, you know, he will attack you with lies. And he will tempt you many times to seek an out to your situation using your own strength, relying on yourself instead of relying on God. Because his goal is to get us to doubt God's commitment to us, his goal is to get us to doubt God's good purposes for us. And to inject us with hopelessness. 
If he cannot give you a false hope, he will inject you with hopelessness. Either way, his goal is to derail you from God's will. What does God say? Don't let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them. He says, be guided by what I said to the prophets, the real prophets. Be guided by my word. And the best way to resist and to reject the enemy's lies is to let the word of God be your guide. To let the word of God be your companion as you continue to wait on God. As you continue to remain in the waiting, as you are in the waiting period. Don't let your emotions guide you. Don't let your feelings guide you. Because the enemy will use that. Be guided in your decision making by the word of God. Not by your emotions. Because it is when we deviate from God's word. That we get into big trouble. Resist the reject. The enemy's lies. And then seek God continuously. As he gives the promise. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. That's what God wants for us. That's what God ultimately has in store for us. In those days, you will pr when you pray, I will listen. God's basically saying there's going to be a new level in your relationship, in your intimacy with me. But he says something very important here. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Our hope is in God's promise. Our hope is in God's goodness. We wait for God's promises to be fulfilled. We wait for God's goodness to be manifest in our lives. But what is important is this. We continue to be a people who seek God. And we seek Him continuously. As you are waiting, stay seeking. Okay. Don't stop praying. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop reading scripture. Don't, sp don't stop spending time with God. Let God know that He continues to be the priority in your life. We worship as we wait. We seek God as we wait. And we continue to seek God. So yes, you know, how many of us are waiting? We're all waiting, eh? We're waiting for a breakthrough. We're waiting for God to answer a specific prayer request. Okay? We're waiting, you know, for, for some parents, we're waiting for our children to turn their hearts to God. You know, you know, for, for some, we are waiting for a financial breakthrough. We are waiting for this particular breakthrough. We're waiting, you know, we're waiting for God to move in a specific situation in our lives. For us here as a church, we're waiting for God, number one, is to pour out a lot of money on us, okay, and to show us the building that we can buy. But in the meantime, what do we do? We continue to seek God. We reject God. What the, any, the lies and the discouragement of the enemy, and we, we, we allow our life, we let our lives be guided by the word of God. We continue to worship God. We make the best with what we have. And we continue to be a blessing, and we recognize that no matter what is happening in our life at this point in time, God is on our side. And God continues. To be on our side. As we are waiting. And at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, your present situation is not your final destination. Turn to one another and say, remind us, your present situation is not your final destination. I'd like to have the worship team up here in front, please. Hallelujah. Uh, 
Aleluia. I'd like to invite you to stand, please. Some of you are waiting for jobs. Some of you are waiting for breakthroughs in your families, with your children, in your situations. us, you know, the wait, it's been a while, but don't lose hope and don't lose sight. That your miracle is on the way. Your breakthrough, your blessing, that answer to the prayer that you've been praying for a long time, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Just like for us here, the building that we've been praying for, it's coming. The finances that we've been praying for, it's coming. It's coming. And when it comes, it's always going to be better than what is expected. It's going to be bigger, it's going to be more, it's going to be greater. Because that's the nature of our good, good Father. Hallelujah. My hope is fixed on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness.
I guess that's what we have to remind ourselves. That Jesus is Lord. He is Lord of all. Even in the midst of what we are going through. Even in the midst of this time where, you know, where, where, where many of us are waiting. Waiting for a breakthrough. Waiting for that blessing to arrive. For that, for that answer, that prayer to be answered. Jesus continues to be Lord. Even in the storm, Jesus is Lord of all. And because He is the Lord, even through the storm, nothing will ever shake His good purposes for us. Just wait. Just believe. Just pray. Just worship. Just seek. Just serve. Just function. Just trust. His blessings will come. And when His blessings come, they will always be better and bigger and greater than what is expected. Hallelujah. Teach us to wait, Lord God. Teach us to wait. Teach us to wait. Because we are a people who do not know how to wait anymore. We have lost sight, Lord God. We have lost, we have lost the art. We have forgotten the art of waiting, Lord. Teach us to wait. Help us to see your hand and to recognize your hand, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord God, to function. That even in the most unideal of situations, we learn to make the best and to function. Help us to continue to seek, to minister, and to bless, even in the most difficult times. To be, to be a witness for your grace, Lord. Hallelujah. Let our lives be guided by your word. Not by our feelings, not by our emotions, not by the lies that the enemy may put into our minds, Lord God, but by your word. And may we continue to seek you, Lord God, as we wait. We worship and we seek you as we wait. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands if you can, if you want to, for the benediction this morning. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Father, we thank you, and I speak your blessing upon these, your precious people today, O oh Lord God. Lord, as I dismiss them, Lord, may they continue to walk in your grace and in your goodness, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 This